So I'm going to give you a brief overview of cancer in the setting of HIV infected population. What we know for sure now is that HIV infected people have an elevated risk for many cancers due to two different reasons. The first one is that they have high immunosuppression, which impairs the control of all oncogenic viral infections. And the second is that HIV infected people usually many times have high prevalence of risk factors associated with cancer, like smoking or alcohol use. The two first more incident cancer, cancers that were observed in the beginning of the HIV epidemics were Kaposi sarcoma and non Hodgkin lymphoma. And there were uh, considered as AIDS-defining cancer, and cervical cancer was considered for women. After the introduction of effective antiretroviral therapy, which uh, occurred in 1996 in Europe and in the US, the risk for AIDS disease and death dramatically declined among HIV-infected population. Here you can see the change in mortality rate ratio when heart uh, became available in 1996 until the, the last 20 years. It declined from about 60, 16 to 33. There was a huge impact, as you may know, of art availability on public health in HIV-infected people. First, the prolonged suppression of HIV replication and improved immune status were very easily and rapidly observed. And this resulted in strong effect on longevity. Here you can see in 1996, only 40% of HIV-infected people were older than 40 years of age. And 20 years after, it became to 80% of HIV-infected people who were older than 40 years of age. But the impact of HIV-related immunosuppression on an aging population remained to be explored. So let's first consider the AIDS-related cancer uh, in the US, because this is the country where we are most of the data at the moment. These are the, the, the green bars. You can see here, here it's in 1991, you can see that both counts and incidence of AIDS-related cancers became, started to decrease before highly active antiretroviral were available. And this is probably due to an impact of the first treatment we had, 3TC as a T, and for Kaposi sarcoma, change in HHV epidemiology. But then incidence declined further when art became available. Nevertheless, rates for the three cancers, Kaposi sarcoma, non Hodgkin lymphoma, and cervical cancer, remain nowadays, now 20 years after we have this treatment available, really elevated compared to the general population. Let's see now the blue bars, which are the non AIDS related cancer. You can see that numbers started to increase when heart became available. And these cancers are mainly anal cancer, lung cancer, prostate, liver, and Hodgkin lymphomas. And the factor that contributed to the increase in number were the dramatic increase in the size of HIV-infected population and, and the proportion of people being order due to the availability of the R treatment. Nevertheless, 
there was a decrease in incidence of almost these uh, non-AIDS related cancers. I'd like now to now to focus a little bit my talk on HPV related cancer. Well, we have heard this morning that HPV causes 5% of all cancers in men, 10% in women. HPV, you know, is responsible for all cervical cancer, maybe not all, if I correctly understood, and 80% uh, of anal cancer. The immunosuppression associated with HIV reduces the ability to control oncogenic viral processes which could explain the greater risk of cancer in this population with these viruses. And actually, the situation is not very nice. You can see that in South Africa, despite heart became available, the incidence of cervical cancer continue to increase sharply. This is in India, this was before heart was available, this is now, and the risk of cancer is increasing. And even in the US, you can see that the decrease of cervical cancer is not significant. So it seems that now women, uh, HIV infected women, are less like, being less likely to clear HPV remain at high risk of cervical cancer. And actually, cervical cancer is really elevated with declining CD4 count or women with a prior AIDS diagnosis, suggesting an etiologic role for immunosuppression to be not able to control HPV infection and persistent HPV. But an AIDS, an AIDS diagnosis could also be a marker of lack of appropriate medical care because these women do not take heart or inadequate cervical cancer screening. And in fact, we know that cervical cancer screening works. We've talked about that all this morning. And in areas where there is a well-organized cervical cancer screening program in the general population, it appears that HIV-affected women do not have a substantially higher risk of cancer than non-HIV-infected women. But conversely, in places where there is no organized cervical cancer uh, program for the general population, in this place, the incidence of cervical cancer is higher in HIV-infected women. And among a population of HIV-infected women, the difference in incidence is not explained by immunosuppression, age, duration of art, but, but a higher prevalence of HPV infection and limited access to effective cervical cancer screening. And it's a study that was recently performed, very interesting, performed in South Africa. They had a population of women who they were all HIV, they were all taking heart, and they started to initiate a cervical cancer program in this population. And this is when this program was initiated, and it was a Papa Nicolaou based screening, it, and improved access to treatment of cervical lesion, then they started to see a decrease in incidence of cancer. And such um, the idea of initiating screening and adequate treatment in a population under heart may be a way to decrease cervical cancer incidence. And I must say that we are planning to initiate such a study here in St. Petersburg in collaboration with IARC and Petrov Institute and University of St. Petersburg, exactly having this, uh, uh, using this uh, protocol. Just a few words, uh, anal cancer is also very frequent in HIV-infected population, and anal cancer is actually the third most common cancer in HIV population. And what's interesting is here is 1996, 
beginning of heart, you can see that incidence of anal cancer did not decrease. Actually, it's continued to increase. And then it was a plateau, and it's only a few years ago that it started to decline. And the relative risk for anal cancer uh, is very high in HIV infected population, not only in men and in men who have sex with men, but also in HIV infected women. And there is a, a supposition at the moment that in HIV infected women, HPV is everywhere in the uh, anogenital tract and anal canal may serve as a reservoir for HPV and be thus responsible for cancer. Because uh, conversely to what's done in, for cervical, there is no screening, there is no guidelines. We don't know exactly how well to screen this population for anal disease. Is there a benefit of HPV vaccine in this population? Actually, there are two diff uh, several trials going on. For cervical cancer, it was recent, uh, this trial are looking only at uh, uh, side effects uh, and not at eff effectiveness. And the, the, the trial for women showed that there was a good response at one year, for it, but then there was a title level decreased, uh, especially for HPV 18. And also it showed that HIV-infected women have several different genotypes and, uh, and that probably the, the quadrivalent vaccine would not be a good suggestion for them, but it, there is no data at the moment. For anal cancer, um, this uh, trial showed there was a very high prevalence, higher than 60%, for anal HPV infection, preconceived lesion in HIV infected individuals, men and women, and the median age for in this trial was 26 years of age. So very young HIV infected people have already lots of anal disease. So I'm not sure, we are not sure that to vaccinate them will be very successful. Just a few words to say that similar to uh, anal and cervix, there is a high, risk, high rate of oral HPV infection in HIV, high rate of oropharyngeal cancer. But interestingly, we know that uh, HPV-related oropharyngeal cancer has better prognosis than non-HPV-related -H cancer, and the same uh, feature is observed in HIV-infected population. This is just to let you know what's going to happen uh, in the future. The number of incident cancer, you can see this is number, the number of incident cancer is probably going to decrease during the next 10 years, and there will be a shift, there might be a shift from non-Hodgkin and Kaposi sarcoma toward prostate and lung cancer. So in conclusion, compared with the general population, HIV-infected people have definitely an elevated risk for a broad but characteristic spectrum of cancer including HIV infected and many other viral related cancer and lung cancer. The risk for all these cancers started to decline, likely reflecting sustained and widened heart utilization. But despite these declines, cancer risk remains elevated indicating that continued cancer control efforts are warranted. And this is going to be my last slide. Targeted public health intervention for HPV have to be considered to reduce the burden of HPV-related disease, such as screening for cervical cancer for all HIV-infected women, and of course, expand HPV vaccination for boys and girls 
but at, and teenagers, I mean, non, not at the time they are HIV infected because it's too late. And also, it is very important to consolidate these efforts to have art expansion and availability as well as retention in care for this population. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hertz. So may I just take one uh, brief question before we let the audience in? So if a woman is HIV positive and she has a diagnosis of, let's say, a microinvasive cervical cancer, does she have AIDS? Is this still a, no, an AIDS-defining cancer? Uh, well, microinvasive is, 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 it depends if you consider uh, it as an uh, um, invasive cancer, microinvasive. Okay. Yeah. If she has CN3, yeah. no, she, no. It's, no, no, it's right. invasive cancer. But then it's still considered an ADC. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. yes. So thank yes. you. Yes. And uh, what about, um, did I catch you correctly, what about anal cancer then? I, I, anal cancer in an um, uh, HIV positive man, w would that also be an AIDS defining no, cancer? No, no, no. The, there are only three AIDS defining cancer. Right. And Hodgkin lymphoma, um, cervical yeah. cancer, yeah. yes, and, and okay. Capacity Is sarcoma. it because of the the size of the association that you differ between them? No, or? it's because of the history of the epidemics. Ah, okay. At the beginning okay. of the epidemics, Kaposi sarcoma and Hodgkin were already blooming, <laughs> so that's why they were considered. But not anal cancer. I, I see. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think we have uh, time for one question more, if you would like. Yes, please. Hello, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't been able to join for the previous morning session, so I hope I'm not going to ask something that's redundant. Uh, but my question is, with the blooming of the immune, on immune oncology therapies now for cancer, um, where do you think you see the association for that and how effective the immune oncological treatments will be in HIV-infected people in the future? Uh, thank you for this question. I Actually, I thought we didn't have time to discuss all this. And uh, okay, um, two things: uh, the um, um, immunosuppression increases the risk of cancer for all patients in the general population. Treatment of cancer increases immunosuppression. So this makes that these people are higher risk. What is usually done is that. HIV-infected people are treated the same way as if they were not HIV. The main issue is um, related to drug-drug interaction, which is high. And now the, there is discussion, there is a recommendation that HIV doctor should work with cancer doctor to improve the the, the treatment that are given. According to new immune treatment, there are studies just starting, no, yes, like anti PD1 and this kind of thing, yes, yes. Studies are starting in the setting of HIV, but I think it's too early to give any response. But that's, yes, we really plan to do that because it makes sense, you're right. 